hello students in today's lecture we shall discuss what are the various methods of speed control of dc motor uh, you recall the equation that we discussed earlier relating speed and torque so speed depends on voltage the flux produced by the field winding and the armature circuit resistance so obviously there are three methods that you can think of the first is armature voltage control that is we change the voltage applied across the armature the second method is the field control or field flux control where we shall vary the flux produced by the field winding by varying the current flowing through the field winding so this method is the field flux control and the third method is somehow we vary the resistance of the armature circuit that can be done by inserting some external resistance in series with the armature and that resistance can be varied to vary the speed of a dc motor so let us now discuss briefly the three methods here the first method is armature voltage control now you can see this equation if we vary the voltage across the armature keeping the flux constant that is we shall uh, give uh, field winding a separate supply so that the field flux is constant we only vary the armature voltage so if we vary the armature voltage you can see from this equation the no load speed y intercept will change the slope of the current stick is not affected r a upon k phi is by it remains constant so the current stick will shift parallel to itself downward if it decreases the voltage for dated voltage this is the current stick for voltage v1 which is less than vr this is the current stick and for voltage v2 which is less than v1 this is the current stick so the current stick shifts parallel to itself and if you are supplying a constant torque load like this dl then the intersection of this load characteristics and the motor characteristic will give you the operating point so the three operating points at this point speed will be omega mr the speed of rated voltage at voltage v1 speed is omega m1 and at voltage v2 speed is omega m2 so you can see that you can vary the speed over the whole range starting from the rated voltage rated speed to a very low speed close to zero so this is the what is the armature voltage control similarly in the case of a series motor also if you vary the voltage across the armature the current stick shifts downwards and the speed will change from omega m1 to omega omega m r to omega m1 to omega m2 so this in this way you can control the speed over the uh, whole range that is starting from the rated speed to a very low speed now one precaution you have to take here that voltage should be changed only in small steps or should be changed very a uh, gradually so otherwise what will happen the current that the motor will draw in the transient will be very very high and that may damage the commutator brush segments so suppose this is the voltage v2 and you are operating here and suddenly you have increased the voltage from v2 to vr in a large step then what will happen at uh, as soon as we change the voltage the current drawn by the motor will change that is v minus e upon r a speed will not change instantaneously because it has some high mechanical time constant it will take some time so immediately what will happen the current will change current will change means and uh, this is the characteristic uh, speed versus torque as well as the speed versus current characteristic is same nature so what will happen the characteristic is some more like this and the speed will be very very so the current drawn by the motor will be very very high that is not safe for the motor so you have to change the voltage only gradually so that the current remains within the permissible limits so this you have to do in small steps or you can change the voltage gradually so that the current is maintained within the safe limits so this precaution you have to take now what are the advantages of 
this method. First advantage is visible from this this uh, characteristics that the nature of the speed torque characteristic is not affected. That is, for example, you are using a separated circuit DC motor, and uh, the requirement is that it should have a good speed regulation. That is, the speed should not change much with the change in torque. So this nature of the characteristic of the motor is maintained. So the speed regulation is still remains same. That is, the change in speed from no load to full load is not affected. It remains same as it was for the original voltage or the rated voltage. So this is one of the advantages of armature voltage control. Second advantage is that the torque capability of the motor is not affected. The torque produced by the motor, if you recall, it is uh, given by P equal to Ke phi into Ia. We are keeping this phi constant. So the torque produced by the motor remains constant. At uh, you can draw a continuous rated current by the armature. So the torque produced will be the rated torque. So this means that if you are reducing the voltage, flux is remaining constant and you can always allow the rated current to flow. So the torque that the motor can produce is always equal to rated torque. So the rated torque can already be produced. So the motor is said to be a constant torque drive. This drive is said to be a constant torque drive. So torque capability is not affected. You will see in the other methods, the torque capability reduces as we reduce or if, as we change the speed of the motor. So these are two main advantages of this method and that is why this method is most commonly used method. The limitation here is that you cannot, if you want to increase the speed above the rated speed, this method cannot be used because you cannot, go, you cannot raise the voltage above the rated voltage to any substantial level. Only slightly you can increase maybe 10% or 20% that will be permissible but usually we try to keep the voltage below the rated voltage. So speed control cannot be done above the rated speed. So this limitation of this method if you have to go for speed control above the rated speed then you have to think of some other method. Now how to implement this method? What are the ways you can implement the armature voltage control because here uh, you must uh, remember that you have to control the voltage at a high current across the armature the armature draws a high current so you have to have a variable voltage supply that is capable of operating at high current also high power system is required there so the Mm, one method is board Lenard scheme. So this has been used in uh, for many years and uh, now it is being replaced by static methods. In this method what we do, we shall discuss these methods in detail in the coming lectures. But basically you must understand that what is this board Lenard scheme. To uh, run the motor, we require a variable voltage supply. For that we use a DC generator, a DC generator is used and that DC generator is run by some prime mover, uh, usually we use three phase induction motor that runs the generator and the field of that generator is varied to vary the voltage across the generator and that variable voltage is given to the DC motor to control the speed. So this method although it is very costly because to, uh, to run the motor you require two additional machines, one generator of same power rating and one motor of same power rating. So the uh, scheme is very costly as well as it requires more space, more floor area is required. You require triple the floor area required by that motor of which you are controlling the speed. But Earlier there was no other method, so this method was being used extensively in the 
uh, industrial applications. Now, if you want to avoid this, there are other options also nowadays, it is available now, that you can have a tap changing transformer followed by some uh, controlled, uncontrolled rectifier, that is diode bridge. So, voltage can be varied by varying the types of the transformer. So, voltage control is achieved from there and then that AC voltage is converted into DC voltage by the diode bridge and that voltage is fed to the DC motor. Third method that you can use is, you can use instead of using tag changing transformer, you can use a controlled rectifier where you, you are using thyristor bridge where you can change the firing angle the thyristors to change the average output voltage available across the thyristor bridge and that voltage is given to the DC motor to control the speed. And in case the supply is DC, you have another option that you can have a chopper or DC to DC converter where the by changing the uh, duty ratio of the chopper, you can change the average output voltage and hence you can change the speed of the motor. So these are the three methods we shall discuss in detail the method control rectifier method and chopper control method. So these methods we shall discuss in detail in the coming lectures. So that is all for this lecture. In the next lecture we shall discuss the other two methods that is field control and arbitrary resistance control and then we shall compare these methods, their advantages and disadvantages. Thank you for today.